This video is brought to you by RV360 Solutions, where we're bringing the RV industry full circle by providing inspections, consulting, and training. All right, in today's video, we're going to take a look at a water preheat modification that I made to the Furion tankless water heater in my Grand Design Reflection 303 RLS. While an RV tankless water heater can provide endless hot water, it does have some downsides. One of them being the volume of water wasted while waiting for hot water to reach the faucet. Adding a preheat loop to the existing water distribution system minimizes water usage and enhances dry camping capability. Let's start by taking a look at a typical water distribution system in an RV. When all of the faucets are closed, the system remains pressurized either by the city water connection or the onboard water pump. Because water is not flowing through the tankless water heater, there is no heating action and the water in the entire system remains at ambient temperature. Check valves are installed to ensure the water flows in one direction only. At the city water connection, the check valve ensures that water does not flow out of the city water connection when the water hose is disconnected. The check valve on the hot water output side of the water heater ensures that water does not flow backwards through the water heater. When a hot water valve at the faucet is opened, pressure from the city water connection or onboard water pump forces cold water into the intake side of the water heater. When water flow is detected by the water heater control system, the burner is ignited and water begins to heat. Hot water flows out of the water heater, through the check valve, and out through the faucet. When a cold water valve at the faucet is open, pressure from the city water connection or onboard water pump forces cold water through the system and out through the faucet. In order to preheat the water coming from the tankless water heater, I installed two recirculating pumps and an electric ball valve under the kitchen sink. Because the tankless water heater requires a minimum flow rate to operate correctly, I installed the two pumps in parallel. In order to save some space and keep everything hidden under the kitchen sink, I installed the two pumps, the valve, and the electrical components on a small piece of plywood that would get attached to the island wall behind the existing plumbing. Now let's take a look at that same drawing with the pumps and valve installed. Just as before, when the hot water faucet is opened, water from the city water connection or onboard pump flows into the inlet side of the water heater the water heater detects the flow and ignites the burner. That water then flows out through the kitchen faucet. Because the ball valve is closed, water does not flow through the added loop. With the electric ball valve closed and the two recirculating pumps off, when the cold water faucet is open, water flows through the cold water system in the same manner as it did prior to making this modification. Again. The closed ball valve prevents water from flowing through the loop. Now with the faucets closed, we can preheat the water on the hot water side of the system by opening the ball valve and turning the pumps on. When that happens, water is circulated through the system, causing the water heater to ignite and begin heating. The pumps continue to run until the water near the kitchen faucet reaches the desired temperature. A water flow meter water flow sensor and temperature sensor are used to precisely control the timing of the water pumps and ball valve. So now I've got two of these pumps in parallel and my plumbing is getting a little bit complicated but you can see what I'm doing is taking my hot water line the, the farthest line from um, the water heater which would be the shower on the other side of this trainer 
and I'm bringing it in, keying it off to both of my pump inlets, and then my two pump outlets get teed to this electric ball valve, and then back into the cold water line, which is gonna recirculate back into my water heater. Um, got my timer circuit so that I just push a button and these two pumps stay on for somewhere around 20, 25 seconds. All right, so let me go back around to this side and this is the button that I'm gonna push right here. So I think I'm a little bit happier with the two pump setup and definitely we're getting hot water coming through all the way over to my water heater. So again, I can't do this too many times. But what happens is my inlet temperature starts to get too high. And now you can see the water heater is up to 151, 153. So this would be pretty much, you know, push the button once, um, get hot water to your faucet, and kind of go from there. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Okay, now let's take a look at the final version of my tankless water heater preheat modification. One thing to note is that I replaced the simple timer circuit with a water flow meter. I also added a relay that powers the pumps and ball valve. Power to run this comes from the 12 volt supply feeding the carbon monoxide detector. I ended up using this Digiten water flow control system because it can be programmed to open the 12 volt electric ball valve and start both recirculating pumps with the push of a button and stops the pumps and closes the valve automatically after a specific amount of water has been pumped through the water heater. Since this kit is equipped with a temperature sensor internal to the flow meter, it is easy to determine exactly how much water flow is required to attain the desired water temperature at the kitchen faucet. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the uh, final product here and just kind of do a quick little walk around. So it's all neatly tucked back behind the existing plumbing. So we've got our two little water pumps in there, our water valve right here. We've got our flow sensor here, which has the integrated temperature sensor. So when I'm all done with this, that piece is gonna go back on there and it didn't impact uh, under the sink at all. So we're going to go ahead and hit start. You can see right now we're at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So the two pumps are running. The valve just opened. You can see we're at about 0.48 gallons per minute. And so everything is going to shut down when that hits 0.75 gallons. So what I want to do is keep an eye on the temperature. So when that temperature starts to go up, I just want to get an idea how many gallons it took. So right there, at about 0.4 gallons, you can see the temperature started to rise. So now it's up to 83, and we're at a half a gallon. So we hit 100 degrees at 0.64 gallons so I might end up bumping this down just a little bit more but let's see where we're at so three quarters of a gallon it turned off 
We're at 107 degrees. And my water is hot. Okay, so let me clear this guy. And we're gonna run one more test. So I have this set to turn off at 0.75 gallons. And what I wanna do is keep an eye on the incoming temperature. And I'm, I'm trying to get that somewhere around 100 degrees. So we'll go ahead and start this. So I could hear my water heater ignite. My pumps are running. We're running at about 0 0.48, 0 0.5 gallons per minute. And you can see the water temperature is actually dropping. Uh, so yeah, I'm guessing we still had a little bit of warm water in there. I ran a bunch of cold water through both the hot and cold side and turned off my water heater because I wanted to cool this thing down so that I could run another test. So water temperature is down to 74 degrees Fahrenheit and we're at about 0.45 gallons and now you can see our water temperature starting to come back up. So at just under a half a gallon which tells me that it took between the water heater lighting and the amount of water to get to underneath this sink was just under a half a gallon. Okay so we're at 99 right there we hit 100 degrees at about 0.7 gallons. So 0.75 is probably not a bad place to be. Alright so we're at 107 degrees and I'm gonna let this water heater turn off for a second but I don't want to cool this down. So now what I'm going to do is run this test back to back. Which I absolutely do not recommend because by this time we've got hot water all the way back to our water heater. So I'm going to go ahead and start this again. And I'm going to get ready to stop it because I'm guessing that that temperature is probably going to start to spike and I don't want to damage my water heater. Now, I'm expecting the water heater to turn off at some point because that incoming water temperature is going to exceed whatever you know set amount uh, Furion has for that. waking this thing up okay so you can see our temperature is starting to rise again we're at 111 it's kind of hanging out right about there So I have the water heater set at 124 and I, I have a feeling that the actual water temperature out this far, okay so that got back up to 120, 121. So as soon as I hear that fan turn off in my water heater, I'm going to run this one more time. Alright, so we're at 121 degrees right now, which is the hottest that it's been. Okay, so again, this is three back-to-back -back tests, and you can see we're starting to see a spike in that water temperature.
definitely some very hot water right now. You can see we're at 142 degrees. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this video up with some lessons learned. And the first thing being the, the requirement for a specific amount of water flow to keep this Ferion tankless water heater uh, burning. And to do that, I, I ended up having to install two pumps in parallel. So on my trainer, I was able to get it to work with a single pump, but with the added you know lengths of water pipe and the other restrictions on my RV, I found that I had to run the two pumps in parallel. Uh, the next thing is using a timer versus a flow meter. So on my prototype, I just had a simple timer and I could set you know how long I wanted the, the pumps to run for. I found that once I installed it on my RV, I needed to have the flow meter so I could monitor water flow and I could also monitor the temperature right there under the sink. So I could get this thing dialed in. Um, so my goal was to be able to push that button and get the water up to about 100 degrees at the kitchen sink uh, before I ever turn the faucet on. And then the final thing I want to talk about is, yeah, this is not a perfect system and you need to be cautious. So because if I run that, you know, run the system multiple times back to back, like you saw at the end of the video, um, the temperatures got up what I consider dangerously high. So high enough to, you know, you could scald yourself. That, that water in that water heater, I think, got up to 167 degrees, which is very hot and it can't be good for the system. So while I think I'm going to keep this system working in my Grand Design Reflection 303 RLS as it is. I'm also going to be on the lookout for a, a little bit different system. And I'm going to reach out to Digiten and see if, you know, maybe they have something. But I would like to have something that will automatically shut the pumps down when that water hits a certain temperature. And I'm sure there's something out there and I'm sure I'm going to be able to do it. But I just want to make sure that everybody understands if you were to install this in your RV, just make sure that, you know, everybody's trained on how to use it. Push the button once and it works great. Uh, I have to say, since I installed this, we had somebody living in our RV for the past couple of months and this system has worked flawlessly. So very happy with the way it turned out. Again, just understand it does have some limitations and I want to make sure that, you know, nobody ends up getting uh, scalded. All right, that's going to do it for this video.